Hey everyone, today we will be talking about magnesium. We will be talking about the most important things. Don't forget to watch till the end. And let's get started. Magnesium is needed for more than 300 biochemical reactions in a body. It helps to maintain normal nerve and muscle function. It supports healthy immune system and it keeps the heartbeat steady. We have parathyroid glands around our thyroid gland and magnesium is important for parathyroid glands which produce hormones important for bone health. The recommended daily intake for magnesium is 300 to 400 milligram per day. And the question is where can you get magnesium? You can get it from pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, spinach, almonds, and black beans. Magnesium is also important for sleep. It helps the body relax and it reduces stress and helps you sleep longer. The difference between melatonin, melatonin helps you get to sleep faster. Both magnesium and melatonin can be used to treat insomnia. Sometimes we can use it in combination. Magnesium in stool, let's talk about it. Magnesium draws water into the intestines, working as an osmotic laxative. This increase in water stimulates bowel motion or motility it also softens and increases the size of stool. This prompts a bowel movement and helps to make the stools easier to pass. In order to diagnose low levels or high levels of magnesium, we should look your serum magnesium level, but it does not always correlate with intracellular magnesium level. Hypomagnesemia, which is low levels of magnesium in the blood, 1.5 milligram per deciliter. It's going to be less than 1.5 milligram per deciliter. And it's a potentially serious condition that may be difficult to recognize due to non specific manifestations. Magnesium depletion usually results from inadequate intake plus impairment of renal conservation or gastrointestinal absorption. This common nutritional deficiency may be seen in many conditions which include malnourished patients. We can see it on elderly patients, for example. Chronic alcoholics, we will talk about this more on next slides. We can see it in diabetics patients on medications such as loop diuretics, specific antibiotics, and pro proton pump inhibitors, patients with prolonged diarrhea, and mild signs of hypomagnesemia are generalized weakness, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. As deficiency progresses, Patients may complain of numbness, cramping, and dysphagia. We can see increased deep tendon reflexes and fasciculations. If hypomagnesemia is an acute and onset and or severe, patients may develop altered mental status, seizures, or cardiac conduction abnormalities. Low magnesium levels also have the potential to affect other electrolyte levels. For example, in patients with hypomagnesemia, we can see hypokalemia, which is low levels of potassium in the blood, and hypocalcemia, which is low levels of calcium in the blood. We said that we will talk about alcohol. And let's talk about it. Alcohol consumption increases the loss of magnesium in the urine 
and decreases the uptake in the liver. Alcoholics are frequently malnourished, which predisposes them to magnesium deficiency as well. In order to treat hypomagnesemia, we generally use oral magnesium therapy, but in some cases, we can use intravenous magnesium, and we will use it when we see seizures or arrhythmias, generally. In severe symptoms, we can use it. And people wanting to increase their magnesium levels by improving absorption could try reducing or avoiding calcium-rich foods two hours before or after eating magnesium-rich foods. Avoiding high-dose zinc supplements can help. Also, if you have vitamin D deficiency, you can treat it. Eating raw vegetables instead of cooking them can help. And of course, quitting smoking would help you. Lastly, we will talk about magnesium toxicity. The diagnosis of magnesium toxicity is based on a blood level of magnesium greater than 2.6 mg per deciliter. It is severe if levels are greater than 7 mg per deciliter. And we can see specific ECG changes. And kidney insufficiency can cause magnesium toxicity because magnesium is solely excreted by the kidneys. And renal insufficiency is a common risk factor for magnesium toxicity. If you can excrete the magnesium, uh, that will pile up and that can cause severe problems. It typically presents with hyporeflexia, which means decreased reflexes. You can see lethargy, headache, respiratory failure, and ultimately, you can see cardiac arrest, not with seizures. In order to treat magnesium toxicity, we are using calcium gluconate, which is an antidote for magnesium toxicity. And we can use repeat doses if it's necessary. Thanks for watching it. That was a quick summary on magnesium. Don't forget to like, share this video with your friends, and see you later.